everybody can tell me that that first answer is what? Three, and then that second answer is one. Okay, so we're good with that, but for some reason, when we put variables in there, y'all want to, in the case of x plus five over x, you want to cancel the x and say that that's equal to five. Well, if that were true, in the first example up here, you would cancel the threes and that answer would be six, okay? The answer is three, y'all are absolutely correct, the answer is three, um, but you can't do that. So same thing with this one. Um, 10 minus five, you can't cancel those fives and say that that answer is just 10. So when you've got something like 4x minus 7 over 7, you can't cancel the 7s and say that that's just 4x, okay? So we've got to be able to, to translate that from numbers to variables because what we're getting ready to do is we're going to talk about uh, rational expressions. Now, you don't necessarily need to write this down, okay? Just listen to what I have to say about it. A rational expression, you need to be familiar with that term, okay? It is a ratio of two polynomial expressions, okay? Uh, two polynomial expressions and a ratio means that you have variables from the top and the bottom, okay? Um, it may not necessarily be top and bottom. You can just have it where there's a variable in the bottom um, and a number in the top, but those three uh, expressions there are examples of rational expressions, okay? Um, we're going to start with simplifying these rational expressions, and a lot of times they can be simplified by factoring, if possible, top and bottom, and then you can cancel stuff that's in the top and in the bottom if it's a factor, okay? If it's a factor. You cannot um, cancel what we canceled in, in, the, in the beginning. Um, so, for example, 6 over 2. Y'all can tell me that that's 3, but the reason why it's multiplication right there, you can cancel those twos. If that were a plus sign in the top, you cannot cancel those. When you're close to over two, it's not equal to three. When you're close to over uh, two, it's by half. It's 2.5, not three. Okay? So that's what we're getting ready to do with um, these variables. Okay? Alright, so this example is on your paper. Okay? I was trying to save us some time here. simplify these, okay? It requires factoring. That's why we spend an entire day and a half here on factoring, um, and a lot of times it's not the simplest case factoring that we've, uh, that you've been doing for a couple of years. It takes a little bit more. So this first example, that numerator, usually we need to start by taking out a GCF. Not always, but a lot of times. And that numerator has a GCF of x, so when we take that out, we're left with x squared minus 4, the denominator does not have a GCF, so I'm just going to jump right into factoring it. It is a trinomial, so it is a binomial times a binomial. X times X gives me X squared. 2 times 1 is the only thing that's going to give me 2, but I need positive X, so that means it's positive 2 and negative 1. Now, that numerator can be factored a little bit more. Okay, that numerator also has the difference of perfect squares. x squared minus 4 factors further into x squared plus 2 times x minus 2. Now, because in the numerator we have three factors multiplied by each other, x times x plus 2 a factor times x minus 2 is a factor, we can in the one in the numerator and the one in the denominator. We can cancel those and our final answer is x times x minus 2 over x minus 1. That's as far as we can go. We cannot then cancel the x's because we can't cancel this entire factor down here. That minus sign Yes, leave it in factored form because we're going to, after this, next week probably, uh, we're going to talk about these as uh, functions. We're going to look at their graphs and it's best to leave it in factored form. Okay? 
Let's look at example B. Okay, example B. Uh, first thing that I'm going to do with B is I'm going to rewrite that numerator because I don't like the fact that x squared comes last and that it is negative. So I'm going to reorder that so it's how I'm used to seeing it. But the negative is with the x squared, so it's got to move with the x squared. The x is positive, the 12 is positive. So when I factor this, I'm going to start with that numerator. I'm going to start by taking out a negative 1. So that becomes negative 1 times x squared minus x minus 12 over the denominator. It would be great if that had a GCF of 2, but it does not. The 9 messes that up. So it just means that I'm going to be, have, have to be a little bit more careful with my factoring here. Um, but it looks like I need to use... 4 and 1, because i got to get 9 out of this somehow. Well, the 9 is going to come from 4 being multiplied by 2, and then just the 1x. Um, the 4 is positive, so that means that we have the same signs. The 9 is negative, so that means they are both negatives. All right, so my numerator, it still needs more factoring. I just took out a negative there um, to help me out. It is x minus 4 times x plus 3, okay? Uh, do not, guys, get discouraged if you do not do the factoring as quickly as I do. I've literally been factoring for mm, close to half of my life. Um, at least 15 years that I've been factoring. I've gotten pretty good at it, okay? So don't get discouraged if it takes you a little bit longer to see the numbers, all right? And you can always multiply it out to make sure that you did factor it correctly. Probably a one with my parentheses right there. I'm gonna take them out. This right here. Yeah. Is that better? Okay. Um, so let's look and see what we've got in common in the top and the bottom. We've got x minus four in the top and the bottom. That is the only thing. So in our numerator, we're left with the negative one times x plus three. Technically, you don't have to put the neg uh, the one. You could just put a negative in front of your parentheses there. Um, and usually if there's just one factor left in the denominator, we don't put parentheses around it. It's fine if you want to keep the parentheses around it so you're not tempted to cancel things, but in answer choices, it's going to be dropped. Okay, let's look at one more here. Let's look at C. Okay, um, C, we don't have any numbers except for our exponents. We've got A's and B's, okay? Now, that numerator is what we did yesterday, the difference of perfect cubes. Okay, the numerator is the difference perfect cube. So if you will remember, we take the cube root of each term. So in this case, that would be A and B, respectively. We square the first one, put it in the first spot for the trinomial. We square the second one, that goes in the last. Then we multiply them together, that goes in the middle. Same, so negative. Opposite, always positive. So we've got minus, plus, plus. That's as far as that will ever factor, okay? It will never factor further. The bottom is the difference of perfect squares. A squared minus B squared factors into A minus B times A plus B. The order of the plus and minus really doesn't matter. I usually put the plus first, but in this case, since there was already the minus in the numerator, I just put it first. It really does not matter, okay? So those A minus Bs, we've got one in the top and one in the bottom. So our final answer is a squared plus ab plus b squared over a plus b. That is it. There is no more simplifying that can be done for this problem. The numerator looks like it should factor a little bit further, um, but trust me, if you tried, it would not work. Okay. Let's do a few more. Let's do d, e, and f here. And then I will let you practice. Well, that'll be the end of class. So let's get these done. Okay. Uh, the numerator of D would be what? Y minus 4 times Y minus 3. The denominator would be Y plus 6 times Y minus 3. So the Y minus 3's cancel. We are left with Y minus 4 over Y plus 6. Again not cancel those y's. E, okay, 
Uh, first things first, I'm going to change that order. I do not like it being written in reverse standard form, so I'm going to turn everything around. Again, just be careful with that, that you, um, you keep the signs in the right places. Okay. Um, now, I can tell that this is going to be grouping. Why? First of all, it's not a trinomial. It has four terms. The highest degree is, is the third degree. Uh, those are the perfect conditions for grouping. So uh, I'm going to take the GCF out of the first pair. Well, in that case, it is negative x squared. We are left with x minus 2. Now remember, if the leading term is negative, you want to take the negative out. Same thing happens with the second pair. There's not really a GCF there except for the fact that it's negative x, so we want to take out the negative 1. And when we take out a negative 1 from the second pair, we're left with x minus 2, which is great because x minus 2 is our denominator. We're not quite finished with our factoring, though, because we've got to group our GCFs together. And just put our common term there on the end. If it helps you to put parentheses around that denominator, that's fine to see that you can cancel the x minus 2 in this case. And we are left with negative x squared minus 1. It's not the difference of perfect squares because it's negative x squared. If you took that negative out, then you would get uh, x squared plus 1, which it really doesn't do us any good to factor that any further um, because there's no denominator left uh, to cancel that with. So x squared, negative x squared minus 1. Sometimes the denominator does completely disappear. Okay? Most of the time it's still there, but sometimes it does completely go away. Okay, let's do one more example here with uh, grouping f. The numerator. There's no factoring to be done. Sometimes that happens as well. Uh, sometimes you, it's just kind of along for the ride, uh, and you're, you're focused on the other part. The denominator, the GCF of the first two terms is x squared. When we take that out, we're left with x plus 1. The GCF of the second pair is negative 9. When we take out a negative 9, we're left with x uh, plus 1. Okay, so let's fix our grouping. Put our GCFs together common factor, nothing cancels yet, okay? But the denominator will factor further. x squared minus 9 is the difference of perfect squares, so that's x plus 3 times x minus 3. Still got that x plus 1, okay? Don't, don't drop it all of a sudden. Now we've got something that will cancel. We have x minus 3 in the top and the bottom. Now, there's nothing left in the numerator, but really there is. Put a 1 there, okay? When things cancel, we tend to think canceling kind of implies equaling 0, but it really doesn't. Canceling in this case is because something divided by itself is 1. And multiplying by 1, we never write multiplying by 1. So since our numerator cancels it back a little bit up there, we've got to put a 1 there in its place. So if we don't, then the x plus 3 and the x plus 1 look like the so um, I have just a few